In this video, I'm going to show you some more examples of differential equations missing y term. The first differential equation is y double prime equals x plus y prime. And we know that the value of y at the point 0 is 1 y double prime y prime at point 0 is 2 and we are asked to find the value of the function y at the point 1 for finding the value of the function y at the point 1 first we have to find the function then we plug in 1 in the function and we can find the value of the function at this given point. But how we can solve this differential equation? In this differential equation, we don't have any term involving y. And so we use the we use this substitution. We suppose z to be y prime. So because in this differential equation we don't have any term involving y. Always in this type of differential equations, we suppose y prime to be z, a new function. I named it z. We can name it any other variable. And because y prime is z, if we take derivative from this relation, z prime equals y double prime. Now, if we use this substitution in this differential equation, if we replace y double prime with z prime note that y double prime is z prime then we have z prime equals x plus y prime and y prime is z so x plus z now we have a first order linear differential equation which we know how to solve the first order linear differential equations so with this substitution we are able to convert a second order differential equation to a first order differential equation and the reason that this technique works is because we don't have y in this differential equation now for solving this first order linear differential equation we use the formula that we know for this type of differential equations if you re don't remember the technique for solving the first order linear differential equation let me remind you the formula if we have a first order differential equation like this y prime plus p of x y equals q of x first we have to find the integrating factor which usually we show integrating factor with mu of x which mu is e to the power of integral of px dx integral of this function after we find the integrating factor y the function equals 1 over integrating factor 1 over mu of x times by integral of mu times by q which is the function in the right side dx plus c we use this formula for solving First order linear differential equations. First, let me write this first order differential equation in the standard form. Note that in this differential equation, instead of y, we have z. Doesn't matter what is the name of the variable. z prime is y prime, but we have to bring y, which in this case is z, to the left side. And we keep x as q of x in the right side. So if we write this differential equation in the standard form, we have z prime minus z equals x. Now here we have a first order linear differential equation in the standard form. Let's find the integrating factor. Mu x equals 2 e to the power of integral of p of x what is p of x negative 1 so integral of negative 1 dx 
which equals e to the negative x. Okay, now we can use this formula to find z. Note that in this differential equation, z is the unknown function. So z equals to 1 over mu of x. Note that mu of x here is e to the negative x. So 1 over e to the negative x times by integral of mu e to the negative x times qx. What is qx? q is the function in the right side of the equation, which is x. dx plus c. Note that 1 over e to the negative x is e to the x because we can bring this up and make the power positive. So z equals to e to the x times by this integral. How we can calculate this integral? For finding this integral, we can use integration by parts method. Let me show you how. In this integral, if we suppose x to be u and dv to be e to the negative x dx, then if we differentiate from u, if we take derivative of x, derivative of x is 1, so du is dx. And from this, v equals integral of this. Integral of e to the negative x is e to the negative x with a negative here. This is really simple integral. Now, if we use the formula of integration by parts, we know that integral of u dv is uv minus integral of v du. Here u is this and v is this. So uv is negative x e to the negative x minus integral of v. v is negative e to the negative x. So we can make this positive and only we have to put e to the negative x here. du. What is du? du is dx. So integral of e to the negative x dx. Again, we have the same integral as here. we had here. Integral of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. So this equals negative e to the negative x. So this integral equals to negative x e to the negative x minus e to the negative x plus c. Now, if we multiply this e to the x in the bracket, z equals to negative x minus 1 plus c e to the x. Note that if we multiply e to the x in the bracket, e to the x times by e to the negative x is 1. If you add the powers, it's equal e to the 0 and e to the 0 is 1. So only negative x remains when we multiply this in the first term. If we multiply in the second term, we get negative 1. And finally, if we multiply in the third term, we get c e to the x. But note that in this differential equation, we are looking to find y, not z. But what is z? z that we have here is actually y prime, derivative of y, not the y itself. We use this substitution. So if we replace this z, if we substitute back and replace z with y prime, y prime is negative x minus 1 plus c e to the x. y prime, I'm saying y prime, I'm writing y double prime. Anyway, this is y prime. But don't forget, we had an initial condition here. So we can use that initial condition before we find y. We can use that initial condition to find this unknown constant c here.
based on this condition that here we have if we plug in 0 for x if we plug in 0 for x here the y prime must be equal to 2 so we replace y prime with 2 and we plug in 0 for x here c e to the 0 but e to the 0 is 1 1 times c is c so c minus 1 is 2 and so from this c simply is 3 So, from this we have y prime equals this, but we replace 3 for c here. We replace 3 here. So, now we have this. y prime is negative x minus 1 plus 3 e to the x. Now, if we integrate from both sides of this relation, we can find y. Because the derivative of y is this. To get rid of derivative, we have to integrate. y equals integral of this integral of negative x is negative x 2 over 2 minus x plus 3e e to the x integral of negative 1 is negative x and integral of this is the same function and don't forget to add a constant here let's name that constant something like d why not for finding d we can use the other initial condition that we had here Based on this condition, if you plug in 0 for x here, the y value is 1. So, we plug in 1 for y and we plug in 0 for x. If we plug in 0 here, it's 0. If we plug in 0 here, it's again 0. Plus 3e e to the 0 plus d. e to the 0 is 1 times 3 is 3. If you move 3 to the other side, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So, d is negative 2. Now, if we plug in negative 2 for d here, we can write, we can find the function y. Let me write it here. Let me clean this. We don't need these calculations to be here. Okay. So, y is the function. The solution of the differential equation is negative x2 over 2 minus x plus 3e to the x plus d. Sorry, plus negative 2, which we can write as negative 2. d is negative 2. Now we want the value of this function when x is 1. If we plug in 1 for x, we get negative 1 squared, which is 1, over 2, minus 1, plus 3e to the 1, minus 2 again. Minus 1 half, minus 1, minus 2, if we add all of these, with a simple common denominator, y equals negative 7 over 2, plus 3e. Let me show you another example of these type of differential equations. Here the given differential equation is y triple prime equals a square root of 1 minus y double prime squared. If you look at this differential equation, you can see that in this differential equation, we don't have y and also we don't have any y prime. The first derivative of y that appears in this differential equation is y double prime. So, it makes sense to choose here not y prime to visit, but y double prime. So we suppose z to be y double prime. Again, because we don't have y and y prime, we suppose the first derivative that appears in the differential equation a new function, and we name it z here. 
because z is y double prime so z prime derivative of z is y triple prime with this substitution we get to this differential equation z prime equals a square root of 1 minus z squared note that z prime is derivative of z with respect to x dz over dx equals a square root of 1 minus z to the 2 we can separate z from x simply if we write the differential equation in this form now as you can see here x is in the right side z is in the left side so we have separated z from x so we have a separable differential equation here how we can solve separable differential equations with integrating from both sides of the equation so for finding z we integrate left and right side of the equation so we get to this integral of dz over the square root of 1 minus z2 if you remember formulas of integral this integral is equal to sine inverse of z because we know that derivative of sine inverse is 1 over the square root of 1 minus z2 so integral of this is sine inverse of z and integral of dx is x and don't forget to add a constant here because in this differential equation we have three unknowns three constants so i prefer to use c1 c2 c3 anyway sine inverse of z is this to make z explicitly in terms of x let's get rid of this sine inverse how we can get rid of sine inverse with a sign so from this z equals sine of x plus c1 note that z is y double prime so actually y double prime is sine of x plus c1 now if we integrate this expression twice because y double prime is this to get rid of those primes we have to integrate twice to get to y we can find y so from this expression if we integrate the two sides y prime equals integral of sine we know that integral of sine is simply negative cosine so negative cosine of what the expression that is inside and again if we integrate from this we can find y so we integrate oh sorry i forgot to put this c here when you integrate add the constant so we have to integrate from this relation to find y so let me write the final answer here y equals to integral of this integral of cosine is sine but we have a negative here so integral of negative cosine is negative sine simply if you differentiate this you can get this function so this is correct integral of c2 the constant c is c2x but because we integrated again we have to add a third constant here so let's name it c3 and this is the final answer for this third order differential equation i hope by watching this video you have learned how to solve second order or higher order differential equations missing y and sometimes y prime like this equation if you like this video please subscribe in my channel and thank you for watching